American television sitcom Smart Guy, which ran for three seasons in the late 90s, centered on the escapades of child prodigy and the youngest of three children, T.J. Henderson, played by Taj Mori, the 10-year-old brother of Sister Sister stars Tia and Tamara Mori. The show was created by Danny Callis and aired on the WB from April 2nd, 1997 to May 16th, 1999. It was produced by DePass Entertainment and Danny Callis Productions in association with Walt Disney Television. 10-year-old TJ with an IQ of 180 gets transferred from his elementary school located in Washington, D.C. to high school, where he ends up becoming a freshman. He skips several grades due to his intelligence, and after his teachers at his old school discovered that he was not feeling challenged enough by a fourth grade curriculum. He knows several languages and has a photographic memory. Not only must he adjust to attending school with teenagers, but the cohort also includes his own older siblings, 15-year-old brother Marcus, played by Jason Weaver, and 16-year-old Tasha Yvette, played by Essence Atkins, and typically referred to by her middle name, as well as Marcus's best friend, Mo Gibbs, played by Omar Gooding. Marcus was the popular but underachieving middle child, dealing with typical teenage problems, including not being keen on his kid brother attending high school with him. Yvette, the oldest, had a passion for the arts, was intelligent, level-headed, and overachieving. Unlike Marcus, Yvette didn't have a problem with TJ being at her school. Their father, Floyd, played by John Marshall Jones, was a strict, widowed, single father and self-made businessman, owning his own roofing company. Marcus's best friend Mo was typically portrayed in the show as being dim-witted but friendly. Not unlike many other series, especially short-lived ones, questions about Smart Guy's cancellation have always been asked since it went off the air. Both Omar Gooding and Jason Weaver have spoken publicly about what happened. Oddly though, they both have very different takes. Omar did interviews with both Comedy Hype and Vlad TV in 2020 and 2021, respectively. He told the same story in both. According to him, when the show began, all of the main cast were getting paid the same amount of money. That was the case for all three seasons. However, in the middle of that third and final season, one cast member decided that they wanted to be paid more than everyone else. That someone was Taj. Omar felt that if that's what he wanted, everything should have been negotiated before the season began. To drive the point home that he wasn't going to continue until his demands were met, Taj was advised to stop coming to work until his contract was changed. The rest of the cast got a phone call letting them know about the changes that had to be done to the script for the next episode they were going to film. Fans will easily be able to notice that not only was it conveniently centered on Marcus and Mo, TJ was nowhere to be found at all. Although Taj did show up the following week and filming went on as it normally did, things would never be the same. Omar, though, thought everything was all good when Taj returned. So much so that when they wrapped that third season, he congratulated everyone on a job well done and said he'd see them all next season. His statement was met with silence. He knew then that he should probably start looking for a new job. He also emphasized in the interviews that he didn't have a problem with Taj getting paid more. After all, he was playing the lead role and who the show was named after. So it made perfect sense to Omar that Taj would make more than the others. Omar's issue was the way he went about it. They paid all of the actors the exact same amount. It wasn't a bad amount, but it was the exact same. We all knew that we were all getting paid the same. And if I'm the lead of a show, you know, if I'm smart guy, it's my show. Why am I getting paid as everybody else, you know? So the only issue um, that I have with it, I guess, you know, because it is what it is. Everything happens for a reason, right? Um, was how it happened. Now, the how was the issue. The how was, I'm not coming to work this week. Like, we're already filming, bro. Like, you, if you have an issue, we did two seasons already. And I get it. After the first season, they were like, yeah, no, if a show does well, we'll get a pay increase. Second season, no, nah, same thing. We're like, damn, really? They raised it by a little bit, but it was nothing dramatic. Third season, like, all right now. Okay, so you should have just sat out or just made your, your, your you know, stance known before rather than starting the film. Because what happened was we started filming a couple episodes and then we got the news. So listen, next week, uh, such and such ain't going to be here. So Marcus and Mo, it's going to be a show about you while one guy's off at camp. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> we were like, damn, he ain't showing up. That's a shame. OK, where's my script? Where's my, you know, and it wasn't like we made this stance like, let's talk about it, man. What do you do? You want to stand with him and this and that? Like, no, nah, we didn't have a beef. We just knew that, you know, we'd have more lines on that week. And we figured, is this how the show's going to go? Is the show over or what? And no, he came back to work the next week and we finished out the season. In a 2019 interview with Comedy Hype, Jason was also asked about why the show ended. His answer was very different from Omar's. 
According to him, he felt that the demise of the show had to do with a new network making certain changes they needed to in order to be successful. Those changes including getting rid of certain types of shows in favor of others. When networks, when new networks are building their audience, and when they're looking to transition to attract a more mainstream audience, they will adjust their time slots and scheduling accordingly to meet that audience. The WB, alongside with like other networks like Fox, when they first launched. UPN, I think. UPN. Went to the CW. Yeah. Um, they, in the very beginning, when these networks were launched, had a lot of content that was geared towards African-American or minority audiences um, to build, to bring in the viewers because we, they knew we were going to sit down and look at it. And after a while, when they're looking to attract a wider audience, a more mainstream audience, then they'll go, okay, well, what show can we fit in this time slot now that can cater to that audience that we're trying to attract? So that's essentially what happened. After the end of its run on the WB, the series reran on Disney Channel for the next five years. It was also shown on other networks such as BET, ABC Family, and MTV2. Smart Guy is currently available to stream on Disney+. In 2021, Taj told Los Angeles-based show KTLA 5 Morning News that a reboot of the show was in the works. Even though he wouldn't be playing the Smart Guy, he told fans that he'd been working hard on it all quarantine. At the time, there wasn't any news on who else of the original cast would be involved, but Taj did reveal that they had a writer and a possible home to air it on. But since then, it appears that no further updates are known.